We believe fundamentally that access to healthy food is a right, not a privilege, and that food drives mental and physical health. One in 10 county residents are facing food insecurity. That translates to 114,000 people. And the reality is the people who were hit hardest by the pandemic are going to be suffering for a long time, and it's going to take them even longer to get back. And you can't get a job, keep a job, succeed in school if you're hungry. When we learned about the Food for Montgomery program, it was just a perfect fit. With a dramatic increase in food insecurity, it was really critical that we had pathways to connect with as many residents as possible, some of which were experiencing food insecurity for the first time. So what Food for Montgomery does is it establishes a private-public partnership that requires us to look at the whole system and the constellation of many different provider partners, allows us to move quickly and invest more strategically to leverage each nonprofit's strengths and their connections and resources alongside those of county agencies. And they all bring different models. Some are on-site distribution, some are home deliveries. They have different language skills and cultural competencies and connections to other non-food services that so many of our neighbors are also seeking. And it also incentivized partnerships that enabled our entire system to collectively save money, time, and resources. And the reality is that you can't vaccinate against hunger, right? So we know that we're going to continue to have this need uh, until our economy is is completely back to where it was before. And even then, we still have have challenges. Uh, but we also need to start thinking now about you know recovery. What do we look like post COVID? And what what gains have we made over the past year of, of incredible hard work and significant investment uh, that we want to keep? We've gained a lot of knowledge uh, through our emergency response. And so what do we do with what we've learned? Uh, do we revert to the way the systems were before? Or do we really strengthen and make permanent the coordination services that uh, have existed both in government and in the nonprofit sector to build food system resilience? We need to build a system that has more pathways to get food into it. And that's where we've partnered with Capital Area Food Bank and MANA to increase their buying power, increase their shelf space, dock space, and build relationships between them and uh, national, international, and local wholesalers and, and retailers and farms so that they have a more reliable long-term supply chain that we can kind of invest in. This systems level thinking, both on the government and the philanthropic side, will make our food system so much more resilient in the long term. And that's why Food for Montgomery, it continues to be so important. There's just this huge benefit of, of having this public-private partnership model transition from disaster response to really thinking about how we can build this system back even better. So why did we decide to support the Food for Montgomery initiative? Well, first of all, it is the place where all of this work comes together. And we decided to put forward a $150,000 challenge grant in an effort to attract other donors to come to this really important issue. Our investment is a commitment to meeting the urgent needs and strengthening the food system for the now, but also for the tomorrow. For those of you who already gave, thank you very much. Please consider giving again. And for those of you who haven't given so far and are inspired by what you've heard today about Food for Montgomery and the systematic changes that we're making, please consider making a contribution.